All right, in this video, we're going to do massive X overview. And I want this to be a video that you can come back and consult if you don't use Massive X a lot. Maybe you come in, you load up a patch, and you go, I don't remember what this component does, but I can hear a sound that I don't really like and I want to change it. Be able to tweak patches to your liking, and then also be able to start designing patches on your own. Once you understand the different sections of Massive X, it's actually not as scary as it looks. And there are some fantastic patches that come with Massive X. There are some really great patches that come with the expansions. I've got a couple of videos that I'll link to. One is my synthesizer basics video. Make sure you watch that. I won't go into detail over things like LFOs and envelopes and filters and oscillators, but I do go over that stuff in the synthesizer basics videos. I'll also put a link to two other Massive X videos I've got where I go into some of the complex stuff you can do with the performers and then also stuff you can do with the voice settings over here and using scales and stuff like that and really sets the synthesizer apart. And then we're going to look at a few patches and see if we can listen to them and go, okay, how can I change something to fit better with my vision of this patch or maybe with my song? So I'm not getting paid to make the video, but I have affiliate links. I'll put an affiliate link in the description and that's a way to help me out. But please don't just buy this because I say it's awesome. Do some research, check it out and make sure it's right for you. Let's get into it. I'm using it here in Cubase and I'm also using it with complete control. And using complete control, you really get over the fact that Massive X hasn't got a great browser. And hopefully that does change in, the, in a future update. And I hear rumblings about that as well, but who knows when that is coming. But if you're in complete control, you can use the browser in complete control. It's fantastic. I go over to Massive X over here with Massive X loaded and I can see things like all of the different banks that I have installed. I can see the library. I can see the two expansions that I've got installed in here as well. I can just click on Rush right here, and now I'm just seeing the patches that are from Rush. And then if you look at the browser over in Massive X, you can do things like, okay, show me Rush and show me the base patches. But I don't know, you just get more metadata over here. You can go clean, analog, digital, whatever. So not something you can do in the browser on Massive X as it's as standalone. Here we go. I'm going to go to Quick Start and I'm going to go to Massive X. And if you choose Massive X, it's going to give you a patch that has routing already set up. And the routing is, looks kind of scary. It looks kind of like something from Reactor. And some of you are going, I don't want to mess around with these cables. You know, I can click on a cable and I can disconnect it by double clicking. But this looks kind of freaky to me. I just want to move knobs and, and that's it. Well, if you load up an initialized patch like this, then you really don't have to worry about this too much. Everything you do, like the oscillators, the filters, and the effects will all work the way you'd hope or expect them to. Okay, so up at the top, we have the header. So the header is where we've got things like our macros and our basic controls like pitch bend modulation, aftertouch. The next section that we have is the audio module. So these are the things that are going to be making sounds. So this whole area right here, this kind of top chunk, this is where we have our oscillators, which create the sound, and we have two of those. Next, we've got our noise generators, and we have two different noise oscillators to choose from with some really crazy options in there. We've got a filter. We've got the insert effects. So I can click these little drop downs and choose three different insert effects. And then we've got the amp module where we can adjust the level overall. We can adjust the pan and we can do something called feedback, which pushes the signal back into itself to get some, some distortion. And then the last thing we've got here is the master effects. So that's kind of what everything, all four oscillators can go through. And you can choose three different effects for all of the sound generators to go through those different effects. Next thing we have is the navigation bar. So this allows you to see ways to modulate or control sound parameters. So what does that mean? Well, first we've got the performers. We'll come back to those in a second. But the most obvious one is the envelopes. So we've got these envelopes right here. And if you look at E1 or modulator one, we can see that this is unchangeable. So the other ones have a little line underneath it. Whenever you see a line underneath something, there's usually other options that you can click and see. So if it doesn't have a line underneath it, then we know that that one's just kind of stuck there. It's frozen there. And that's because this modulator one is the amplitude envelope and we don't really want to mess with that. We always want an amplitude envelope. So here we can do change things like how quickly does the sound kick in? And how quickly does it release? So 
we'll come back to these envelope generators in a second. And then we've also got things like LFOs, which add a way to wiggle some parameter. So if I wanted to wiggle something like the pitch, I could say, take this LFO right here, which is now modulator four or L4. I could take this one, just click on the little arrows and drag this over to the pitch of the overall synthesizer. So I can click and drop it right there. And right now nothing is happening because I have to go change this parameter to say how far do I want it to wiggle the pitch. So let's move it up 12 semitones, which is an octave. So now it's moving it up and down an octave and we can go and change things like the rate. So we'll do all of that kind of stuff in a little bit as well. But if I want to reset something, double click it. And if you want to get rid of it, just right click and choose delete. We can also take this LFO and we could apply it to something like a frequency, a filter. So I drop it onto the filter. And then now I see nothing's happening. Watch what happens as I move my filter down. And then watch what I click on. When I click on L4 and drag this up, we can see it's going to push to the right and the left which is exactly the same thing as going like this. But we're just using an LFO to do it for us automatically. And then over here on the right hand side, we have something called trackers. And these trackers will track some parameter up the keyboard. So we can start at the bottom of the keyboard and we can have things change as you move up the keyboard. So the most obvious one we would do is use that for something like frequency or the filter so that the filter opens up as you move higher up the keyboard. Because if you have a low pass filter that's filtering out high frequencies, eventually you would cross into that filter and you'd no longer be able to hear the main pitch. So the filter changes as you move up the keyboard. We actually have a key tracking thing right here on the filter to do that. If we were to use a tracker instead, you do things like make the curve be logarithmic as you move up the keyboard or something like that. And then the last thing we have is this voice randomizer where you could assign that to a parameter and have it do just some random stuff. And then underneath the navigation bar, we've got the editor. And the editor is always going to show you whatever you're clicked on in terms of these different controllers right here. So if I click on this one, you see it all becomes highlighted so we can see all three of those modulators. Click on this one, we can see all three of those LFOs and so on and so forth. So if I click on performer one, we're going to see the editor for this specific performer. And a performer is kind of like a sequencer. So with these sequencers, we can build entire patterns that will keep repeating and you can have multiple patterns. So we'll see some patches later that will have one sequence going, playing some notes, and then an entire different sequence at the same time, maybe doing a baseline on a different oscillator in the same patch. So you can get really complex stuff going on with these different little performers. And then at the bottom, you have a way to assign key switches to these different performers. So you can have a whole bunch of different sequences or up to 12 different sequences plugged in for these performers. And then you can control them by key switches at the bottom of your keyboard. It's really, really powerful, really cool stuff. So let's go into a little bit more detail of everything now. So the first thing you see is pitch bend. Okay, pitch bend. If I click and drag pitch bend, I can assign it to some other parameter. So so you can hear that's opening the filter now and closing the filter if I bring it down. And then if you say, well, how can I get rid of the pitch bend if I just wanted to use pitch bend for that? I'll just go and set this to zero and this one to zero. Now you're just using pitch bend to control this frequency filter. So once you start looking at how to change parameters and how to modulate parameters, it's actually pretty simple in this program. It just looks freaky to begin with. Next, we've got the modulation wheel. Same thing, I can drop the modulation wheel right onto another parameter. And nothing happens. Why is nothing happening? Because I have to click on that little modulator and drag up to have it move when I move the modulation wheel. So that is exactly the same thing as just going like this. Okay, using the modulation wheel to control some parameter. So whenever you see M anywhere, it means that multiple things can be assigned to this modulation wheel. And then you can go and change them, you can dial them back. If you think the modulation wheel is changing too much of one parameter, so let's say you're on this one and you don't like that it's changing so much, all you have to do is click on that one and drag down just a little bit. And now the full sp scope of the modulation wheel is just going to go this far. Let's delete that. Next, we've got aftertouch. 
and we can add aftertouch to something like the filter frequency. I don't want to push on my uh, keyboard tray too much. It's not that sturdy. And you can see with this initialized patch that we already have a bunch of macros assigned. Things like position of oscillator one, level of oscillator one, position of oscillator two, level and so on, and then some stuff with the filter, and then also some stuff with the main envelope down here. These are some really basic controls that you pr pretty much want on any synthesizer patch, but then we can go and assign other knobs to other macros. So we can take this macro right here and drag this right onto level. So now we can see macro nine is assigned to the level. And if you have hardware hooked up like complete control or machine, I can go over to page two and now I can see that macro right there. So, and then now of course you can see these numbers and make some sense out of those as well. So if you load up another patch, you see numbers floating around on parameters like this, these red numbers, they're referring to the macros. So next we'll go over to this pitch thing right here. And we can of course just change the pitch. So now we're no longer playing a C. The fun thing about this is assigning some kind of modulator to the pitch. Now, anytime you see any of these double boxes, there's a whole bunch of those in here as well. All that is, is some spot for you to go and modulate some parameter. You could use an LFO to modulate the pitch. So you would drop that LFO onto that little spot and then have the pitch warble up and down over time. And then you wonder why there's two boxes. Well, you could have one LFO modulating the pitch really quick. And then you could have another LFO modulating the pitch and maybe just doing a slight change. And then next we've got things like glide. We can turn glide on. So, we, so watch what happens if I change the glide time. All right, next thing we've got is the oscillator section. This is probably the most important area of Massive X because it's what creates the raw sound that you're then going to be shaping with all of the other stuff like filters and effects and adding to it with a noise and potentially taking one oscillator and using the other oscillator to change some parameter on the first oscillator. So we won't get too much into synthesis with this, but again, check out some of my other synthesizer videos so that you can learn about analog synthesis. I also have one on phase modulation, which this PM stands for right here. So we have phase modulation built right into Massive X, but I won't go into that one here in detail, but this whole section down here deals with phase modulation, uh, very similar to frequency modulation. Yamaha DX7 is frequency modulation. Casio CZ synthesizers are all free phase modulation, and I've got videos on both of those topics as well. Let's just look at what the oscillators do in Massive X. It's a wavetable synthesizer. And a wavetable synthesizer is just a digital waveform. So you've got a shape. And really that shape gets translated into an electrical pulse, which then moves your speaker back and forth. So if you think about a sine wave, if I move this all the way down to a sine wave, it's pushing your speaker out and in rapidly over time. What we can do with a wavetable is we can have all of these different little snapshots that you can morph between. If we use this wavetable position controller right here, we can slide through the wavetable and see how it's morphing. So this is a really basic wavetable. Starts with a sine wave. We can morph it up to a triangle right about there. And then we can morph it up to a saw right about there. And then we can morph it over to a square right about there. And you'll see it, you'll hear it changing as you move. We see this underline, so we can click right here and we can go to something like, uh, let's go to Monster and try some of these wavetables out. So it still looks kind of uh, simple. Let's try maybe. You can see this. So you can see that waveform changing a ton as you move through it. As you can hear, changing the wavetable, morphing through the wavetable, it's just giving you different timbres. But sometimes moving through that shape is what makes a wavetable or wavetable synthesis so exciting. We can have it change with uh, a low frequency oscillator. So we can assign this thing right here, LFO1, to 
this wavetable position, and now it's just going to move through, pulse through that wavetable. Crank it up. Crank up the speed. Wiggling the knob, that's all it's doing. It'd be great if we could see it moving. I'd love to see that, but right now we can't. And now what we can do with these wavetables is we can go and change the wavetable mode. And that is also something that's getting to some weird rocket science that I, I don't even understand. But we've got these different ways of warping this wavetable. You have all these wavetables to choose from over here in these different categories. And then you have a whole bunch of ways to change each individual waveform. As I switch from one to another, it's going to change the sound of the wave. So hard sync is actually a synthesizer setting that we have on analog synthesizers. And every waveform has a cycle, and that's what gives it a pitch. And if you add another oscillator that's at a different cycle that's out of step with the first one, but then you force it to reset at the beginning of the other waveform's cycle, then you get some really interesting sounds. So that's hard sync. I love the sound of hard sync. It's got a classic, classic sound. And then we've got things like this gorilla one, which was new with Massive X or exclusive to it. Messing with the wavetable. We've got another oscillator right next to it. And all you have to do is turn up the volume of that one. And now you have the second oscillator in there. You can't really hear it doing much right now. But if I turn this one off, all I have to do is click that turned off. Now we can hear that sine wave. So let's maybe turn this one down a bit. We can start to hear that other wave table happening. Let's take this down an octave, and now we can get a sub frequency. So now you can hear that sine wave that's happening an octave below. And then we can do all sorts of stuff with this one. We can go choose the different wave tables from there. We can use this oscillator for phase modulation. So the noise section, ways of adding noise to your patches. And there is a ton of noise options in here as well. Look at this waterfall. Let's turn off these oscillators so you can really hear it. Okay, let's try it. And then we can arrow down for the next one. Gas. Wow, traffic. Drone. Got an actual drone in there. I love it. Let's try taking this one. Anyways, a lot of stuff that you could do with these uh, this noise these noise oscillators as well. Next, we've got the filter section, and this Asimov filter is the default filter type. And this one is a low pass only. And so what that means is as I move this frequency down, we're going to hear frequencies get cut out. So let's go load up just the basic EQ and Cubase here. So we can see the fundamental frequency and the complex overtones over top. Watch what happens as I go through the filter. So you can see all of those high frequencies getting cut as I move the frequency knob down. So the low pass filter, it's allowing the low frequencies to pass and it's cutting the high frequencies, also called the high cut filter, by the way. And then we've got this resonance control. So watch what happens when I crank up the resonance control. You're going to see a boost of frequencies right at the point where things get cut off. So you can actually see it right here. There's this little boost that happens. So we can imagine that if I put a high cut filter on here in Cubase and went like this, we could then also, a resonance bump would look just like that. So imagine the filter doing this kind of thing and coming down. As you sweep through, those things are moving connected with each other. So when I turn those off and play with it now, and you see that little boost that's happening as I cycle through. Let's crank it up even higher. Now you can see it getting right up to that middle line. 
and it really adds that kind of nasally quality that we all love about filters. Anyways, I've got a whole video on filters in the synthesis video, so make sure you go watch that video. I won't talk about it too much here. It goes over things like key tracking. So if you want different types of filters, you can go to things like this Blue Monarch. That'll give you things like a bandpass filter, a peak filter. A bandpass filter only allows a certain range or a certain band of frequencies to go through. A peak filter will just allow all the other frequencies, but it'll actually just boost a little bit at a certain point. And then we've got a high pass filter, which will cut out the low frequencies. And then dual notch allows you to have two different points to dip frequencies. Anyways, that's the frequency section and it's indicated by an F. You'll see that over in the routing section. This F right here. Unfortunately, nothing else makes sense with the actual numbers and letters in terms of this stuff here. Like the other ones are ABC for effects and XYZ for effects. But anyways, that's just the way it is. So if we go over to the next section, which is our insert effects, there you can see a drop down and you can try different types of effects, distortion, ring modulation, bit crushers, things to change the, the character of the sound. Let's go to distortion. <laughs> That actually sounds pretty good. Let's leave that one on. And then next we've got this section here, which is just our amplitude. We can control the level, pan, double click to reset it. And we've got feedback so we can push the signal in on itself. Let's leave that one on just like that, kind of like that gritty sound. Next, we've got our master effects like reverb and delay. So let's put some reverb on there. And let's go to a large hall. And our mix, we could do like fully processed or not as much. Change the size. Sounds pretty good. We'll just leave that one just like that. We've also got things in there like delay, stereo delay, expanders, phasers, and so on. So let's try a little phaser on there. All right, let's leave that off for now. The thing I'll mention about this voice setting is make sure you go watch my videos, my other two videos on Massive X, because I do talk about this unison thing where I break down how you can use this to use chords and to, to really generate some amazing sounds that are stuck in the key of whatever your song is. And that, again, it's just this thing that makes this so powerful. You can't do this on software like Pigments, where you have things confined to a key and using really interesting chords and stuff like that. So I'm telling you, best part about Massive X in my opinion. But the unison thing is pretty neat. Watch what happens if I put this unison on. The sound gets a lot thicker. So we can crank up. And it's only got six voices. I know that that's less than programs like Serum. So people were complaining about that. So that's the voice tab, the routing tab. Again, we won't worry about right now. Performers, I'll also point you to those other videos. Make sure you watch those so you can learn how those work. But maybe we'll look at a couple patches that have them. Next, we've got the envelopes. Watch my synthesizer basic video on envelopes. You'll learn about how to change the shape of sound. Turn the reverb off just for a second so you can really hear that. Take it off, or take the release really short. Right? As soon as I put the reverb on, that kind of gets lost, but... Let's go back to the reverb and just dial that back a little bit. Cool. So there's our release. And we've got things like the sustain. And the beautiful thing about the newest Massive X is that they do have envelopes that change the graphics and they didn't when it first came out. So, so glad they added that because then we can see things like if we put sustain in, what does this shape do? Well, now we can see that shape just changes the shape of that curve as it's going down to the sustain level. So don't worry too much about this if this is new to you, but it is really neat that we can go and have so much control over the envelope, logarithmic or linear, that kind of stuff. And over on this next modulator, this modulation envelope, we have a 
we have a whole bunch of those to actually choose from. So we can have a whole bunch of modulation envelopes on different parameters. In fact, we could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So I don't know why you'd want that, but it's possible because you can just go to all these other modulators like these LFOs and just switch it to a modulation envelope. So what we can do with this modulator is we can drag E2 onto the frequency knob. And now what's happening is this shape right here is causing this thing to go like that. It's going all the way up and then coming down over this amount of time. Watch what happens if I drag the attack up. Now it's going to go from here up over this speed and then it's going to go back down over this speed right here. Let's make it even longer. So now it's the same thing as going so it's like how fast am I jumping up to that level? That's the attack. How quickly am I returning back to it? That's going to be the decay. So let's make it go a little faster. Oh, let's turn it back on. Envelope 2. Now we can hear the decay is really fast. We can even go in and change the shape so that it's a little more logarithmic. So much customization with these envelopes. And this isn't new to synthesizers, but it is very powerful and very usable here in Massive X. So, so that's using a modulation envelope to control any other parameter. We could assign this also to, say, the wavetable position. Sounds pretty cool. All right, let's get rid of that for now. And we'll get rid of this one as well. Okay, modulation envelopes. These exciter envelopes are really neat. They can add a little bit of percussive elements or change elements at the beginning of a sound. So you can use them as transient shapers. We've got LFOs, which I've talked about briefly already. Let's crank my uh, frequency up. A couple things to note about the LFO. This is the shape of the thing that's wiggling. We go over here, we've got this. Let's get rid of that one. We've got LFO. We can assign LFO1 or modulator 4, L4, to the frequency. So we've got our rate right here. Right now it's set to free, so it's going only by minutes and seconds. This now syncs to the tempo of your song. So I could go change the shape of it right here so it's a little more aggressive. We go to square, now it's going to sound kind of like on and off. Then of course we can change the level right here so it's not, overall it's not doing as much. So I think that gives you a good overview of the envelopes. Go check the other video for the performers. But now what I want to do is look at a few patches and see if we can go, okay, now that we know all of this about Massive X, how do we open up a patch and, you know, make some changes? We're going to go over to the Rush patches. So this is one of the new expansions and I really dig it. It's one of my favorites. Let's try some of these patches out. Double click. So right off the bat, we can see yellow stuff happening with these performers. So any of this yellow stuff is tied to one of these performers. And we can see P1 is changing the frequency. So that's what I'm on right now. So on P1, I could go and change the rate. So now you can hear the frequency is going really slowly through this little sequence. Go faster. Let's go to P2 and see what that one's doing. That one looks like it's doing some kind of pitch thing. I can see it assigned to the pitch of this oscillator. This is the pitch right here. So it's going up and down by two octaves. I could move this all the way up and you can probably guess what's going to happen. Let's load another patch and have a look at something. So here we can see E2, envelope 2, is assigned to the frequency of our filter. 
Let's make it a little slower. Or faster. Okay, that's easy change. It's pulsing. That's pretty fun. What about if we add some more points in here? Drop it down. <laughs> right? What is this changing? P1 is changing this knob right here, and it's also changing the bandwidth. Let's see how much that's actually changing it. Right? It's starting to get some idea of, of connections between these different parameters and what's happening with the sound. Oh, I love this patch. I think I used this one in another video, but so we can see with these performers. So that's probably. So something's happening with that one. Let's try, try changing it a little bit and see if we can change the notes. So you can hear that lower synth is now a different note. So change it back up. We get some slides in pitch. Such cool sounds, I'm telling you. Gotta mess around with these. Let's see what LFO5 is actually doing. If we turn that off. Different sound. All we have to do is drag it back on and it'll remember the level that it was at. So we can hear that drastically changing the sound. We don't have to know exactly what's happening, but we just have to understand where these different aspects are happening in relation to the sound that we're hearing. And then we can start tweaking the sound to our likes. Try another patch. Okay, so let's look at this envelope too. Let's delete it. So that envelope is having a dramatic effect on this patch. And I'm guessing this attack which has its own macro right here you know that gives that that bright percussive attack all by changing this frequency knob right here let's try another patch If I go over to LFO or LFO4, L4, we can see some stuff is happening right here. Let's see what happens if we change it. Let's change to that one. Okay. So let's find out what's causing the most dramatic change. Let's click on this one right here. Not as dramatic. Not doing too much. Let's try changing it right here. We'll delete it. Put it back on. That's having a, a pretty huge change over the timbre of the sound. So very easy to delete things, add them back on and see what is doing what. Really nice sounding patches. I think Rush is probably my favorite uh, Massive X expansion if you're thinking about getting some of them. But do watch my videos before you make that decision yourself. Anyways, I think we'll stop it there. And I'm just getting so excited working with Massive X again. I definitely want to do a detailed video on the performers so you can go in and start crafting your own crazy sequences with Massive X. Anyways, we should stop this video there. It's getting really long. And believe it or not, this is the second time I've filmed it. So I hope you appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you want to help me out, just click that affiliate link. I've got also ways that you can donate to me in the description. And I'm going to be doing some more videos over some of the basic things that come with the complete packages. So Black Friday sales on right now. And there's sales going on every few months with Native Instruments. So if you're thinking about getting it, you might want to wait till one of those moments. Anyways, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.